What's going on guys, James Banks here and I'm joined by Carrigan. Phase have made it through, but it wasn't the easiest route. But before I go on to looking at the face of Major, I just want to go back a little bit to Dreamhack Masters now. Fifth to eight finish there, probably something you're not going to be too happy with. Did that concern you too much before going into your games here at the Major? Yeah, of course, because I think people saw like what we could do in three maps out of the the seven maps or four of the seven maps we played in in Stockholm we we basically wrecked Optic and wrecked the mouse on the first map of the playoff and then suddenly something switched in the team uh, I don't know this uh, and it's something that kept on going um, to this tournament and sometimes you have to do radical changes to to like overcome this and just like go with new confidence now your game versus big they didn't expect, I spoke to Gobby, he was like, didn't expect to play Dust 2. What was kind of the reason why you guys kind of pitched into that? Was there a, did you think you'd like have a one-up over him? And did you really expect it to go down the way it did? I mean, we, we're pretty confident on Dust 2. I, I still think it's a map that's hard to play. Um, you don't really know, is it T-Side or C-Side? -side? Basically, we think it's a T-Side, but then you see it starts winning 15 series against Mibo on C-Side. So, um, I think it's still an early map, and I think we practiced a lot for, for Stockholm, and we kept on improving on it. So, we thought it was a good map to start a tournament with, so you, at least you get into the game when you play those two. Where if you play a map some Train or Opas, it might be a little harder to get the, those aim duels, and we wanted those aim duels and lost them. Now, the Na'Vi game. That, when I went into it, obviously I know the history between you and Na'Vi, uh, generally they've come up on top, especially in the best of three scenarios, but in the best of one I thought, okay, look, this will be phased now, the time to come back into it. Again, dropping a game there, obviously pressure being on you. Was there just any thoughts on yourself there on what went wrong or something you need to work out for your overpass? Because you used to be one of the teams that would be like winning most of their games on overpass. It used to be a very strong map for you guys. Yeah, I still think we are one of the best teams in the overpass. We, in my opinion, have the strongest team side of all. Uh, the way we play, the, the way we are grouped up as a team. Um, you can go to Olof or Nikon B or you can choose to go to Rain and Guardian on A. And it's really hard to, you can't really find me. So you have to go through the other guys to, to really count on me. Um, in the end, um, I think when you look at the game we had like three rounds in a row we had three and threes two and twos and if you just win one of those rounds the whole thing changes we win the pistol we lose the antique or we have two and two three and threes three rounds in a row um, so we played the economy game based of that that one round we could win would change the the whole game and in the end it hurt us since we couldn't get those fully equipped and orb and and do some of the other strats we have um, so I guess we can save that for playoff now <laughs> it was not so easy to say after the game though now, then you had Mouse Sports, you got your revenge on them. Tyloo game went as you would expect there. Like, I was just thinking, okay, it's normal phase back in line. Now this G2 game, first map, it was phase all-star, right? 16-2, very convincing. Then going into Dust 2, that was like a crazy back and forth game. You said you're still not like, you don't really find your feet in Dust 2. Is there something, because more and more teams are playing it, is there something you guys are definitely going to work on going into that map? Because it still doesn't seem to be the strongest point for many teams. No, I think at this point all teams can agree that having those two the best map uh, is not a good choice. Um, so what is important is to keep those two a third or fourth map in your pool, I would say. And you can be specialist on other maps where you can uh, can force the V2 out. It's one of those maps, like we did against uh, a D2 by Pig Mirage. It's a map they're not specialist on, that are we. Um, so they picked those two. Uh, a map that's really really simple to play um, but in the end it's very hard to have it as a very very consistent map um, so I think that is going to be a key uh, for for all for those two for a long time that you consistently cannot be a world beat on it um, it's early to say but let's see if, if somebody's gonna be proven the best those two team in the world after this tournament now we heard some things on Twitter and people were trying to guess it from looking at the screens Nico calling is this a thing that's happening more regularly is he only doing it every now and again or what's the reason behind it? Uh, it happened after the Navi game. Um, there are some things in the team we decided to change up um, since we were like going down spiral. Um, sometimes as a leader, when you lose so many games, you, you try to improve the mistakes you do, um, do some wrong calls, do some good calls, you lose the round. You lose confidence in yourself and, and sometimes you need a, a briefer uh, as, a, as a captain. Um, you saw yourself at Fall and Colseo did in period of time. Um, so I, I think we will look at this as that kind of thing. But if you go on winning tournaments, I, I, I don't know. Um, but right now I'm trying to find my own role within this team. I'm trying to support Nico and be full-on support player. Um, so, so I'm trying to 
to try a role I never tried in my career. That's the last uh, role I, I'm gonna try. Um, I tried all being tried being star player, I tried being in game leader, um, second star, stuff like that. Um, so now it's full on support for this tournament and um, let's see what happens after. Now that interests me because you are one of the obviously experience wise, your time within this game, you understand the game very well. You've got the pieces of the puzzle in terms of the ability. You say this could be the last role you try. Would that mean after that you feel like, okay, I'm, I'm done or do you feel like it's time to move on? What, what's your reasoning? No, I, th I think more like the last role I never tried in CS or CSGO. So, so basically I played all roles during my 18 years playing Counter-Strike. So um, it was one of the last things I never tried. Uh, and I feel actually it's a great role. Uh, I think I fit it in. Um, fit in all the holes or the gaps this team is needing with buying low equipped uh, and buying uh, cheap weapon and having all the grenades so I can set up the team at that way um, and being entry frag if Nico needs me that way. So basically I'm just filling in the gaps and whatever Nico wants to do I'm doing 100%. Okay. I like it then. So it's still the confidence regardless of you being in game leader carrying over working quite nice at least your G2 game. Now Olaf's made his return. He's now back stabled into the lineup. Obviously the two results you had with Chroman were very positive right considering it was a stand-in. Are you still adjusting to having Olaf back in the lineup or has it now just kind of been playing sailing you feel like you've got your groove back no i think you're also about this in-game leading you have been playing with so many different players that that you cannot really find your uh, your comfort zone anymore because when you switch up players you try to adapt you get a new player and with the situation with chroman we played another style than we do with olof and that's like kind of like i i think the style was good but i couldn't really try to fit in olof in it and try to go back to the old style so i think having olof back is is probably the best uh, the team could have there is no one that can replace that kind of type uh, player that we need in the team. Especially all he's always good at lifting the mood and, and make sure we perform on a high level. So um, the resource we had at Chroma was good. But again, it's kind of a honeymoon period. You are in, you, you change the style, you change up some spots. Some maps are good suddenly, some maps are bad. Uh, and, and it's really hard for teams to to get to know that before a second or third tournament. Uh, and we also lost to big in Cologne with Chroma. So it's not uh, getting worse at least. Okay, so you've got the star-studded lineup as an in-game leader and just within your own team. Is it difficult to kind of manage everyone within that team and give them what they want, give them the space they want as well? Because I guess at times you, from an outside perspective, people might look at it as like, oh, they're kind of fighting for who's going to be number one. And no, not within the lineup. Everybody knows Nico is the primary star of the team. Everybody knows, everybody agreed on it that Nico is a star. That's the guy we set up who consistently can, can beat people. And whoever second, third or fourth star or, or the fifth star, it doesn't really matter. Um, as long as you win. Obviously, people want impact on the rounds. And, and, and that is where it can be hard sometimes that you have a lot of playmakers. Rain gets in a good position. Nico gets a good position. Garden wants to go for a peak. And suddenly, a streamer can sometimes look like, what are they doing? They're just playing FPL one by one by one. Um, but when it finally works, um, then it looks pretty good because we are really good at playing off each other. Um, so so that is the thing that when you have a star lineup, that is one of the the hard things to <laughs> to really. <laughs> We just got people running across the thing, you know, they can't see a camera, fucking idiots, but you know, we just rock it and just get on with it. <laughs> last question I got for you. FaZe obviously, especially last year, you were one of the top two teams in the world. You were very dominant. You had your tournament victories going back and forth between either it was Astralis or either it was the SK guys. What will it take for you guys now to kind of get back up that? Because you dropped down in terms of rank and rise to fifth, um, but you've still put up some good results. What do you think you need to get right back up to the top again? I, I think it's the confidence. We have the player. We have the we have the way we want to play as a team. We all on the same page in the, in that regard. Uh, what we need now is confidence. We have obviously have a very tough year with using two different stands. All of coming back. All of going out of the lineup again. Yeah. So the whole motivation has been a very hard thing for us this year, and we have really worked hard to win the Grand Slam. So that was also a slap in the face when we lost the opportunity to, to win it in Stockholm. Um, right now, going 0-2 just to begin with was really, really tough and the team had a long team talk. Um, but everybody know there's one game at a time and now we're in playoff. And when people see the way we've been playing on Mirage, I, I think people are getting a little scared that we actually are back in the tournament. But right now, we don't really care. We were supposed to be out, maybe. We could have lost to Mouse and going through the minor. Now we're here, two or three games away from winning the major. So. Right now, we are just going to give everything we have and hopefully people will, will see how, how it goes. Now, with the phase lineup and just your team in general, people can be quite critical. So anything you want to say out there to all the people watching at home? No, keep on criticizing us because it gets us more motivated and more fired up. So if you want to make us be the best team in the world, just 
criticize us it's good <laughs> thank you very much Carrigan. always appreciate it another interview being wrapped up here at the face it major phase are your next team through only one more remains let's find out who it's going to be and don't forget to drop a subscribe on the button below subscribe <laughs>